Welcome to another episode of the Streetpreneurs Podcast, the podcast where we transition street culture to entrepreneurship. And today I have a special guest, um, the food truck business. We want to talk about it. I have guests who have been in this industry for maybe a couple of years. And um, I found these young ladies while I was out shopping myself for vegan food. And I came across them and I thought they had a really interesting story that the world would like to hear about. I would like to welcome sometime Atarian Food Truck Business to Streetpreneurs Podcast show today. Uh, ladies, introduce yourselves. Yeah, uh, thanks for having us on the show. My name is Danielle. This is Shanae. And we are the co-owners of Sometime Atarian. We are a vegan plant-based business here out of Atlanta, primarily serving food deserts and underserved communities and bringing them the goodness. And you know the question everybody wants to know, including myself, who came up with the name <laughs> Sometime yeah. Atarian? Please tell us what does that mean and just, you know, the whole concept behind the name. Absolutely. Yeah. So the word Sometime Atarian kind of came about. Um, I initially was the first person to go plant based per se. And every time we would have friends and family over, they were like, dang, like, if y'all was cooking for me every day, I could be vegan or whatever. You know, I ain't no vegetarian, pescatarian, you know, man. I'm, I'm sometimes a terrian. Like, my sisters, they just kept saying, I'm sometimes a terrian. When I come to y'all's house, sometimes, you know, I'm health, health conscious. Other times, I just, you know, really just don't care. But when I'm with y'all, I feel like I could do this full time. So we kind of just ran with it as a, as a joke. And then when... The Super Bowl came to Atlanta. We were all sitting around like, man, we can't leave this money on the table. We were already kind of running a makeshift food prep business out of our house. And my sisters were like, we could monetize this. Like, it's too much money coming to the city for us to not legitimize it. So we all went in with our money and got an LLC so we could be legit found a spot that we could vend. And that first weekend, it was like, yo, like, this is a thing. Like, this is the whole this thing. Is like, what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> Chef has years of experience. I mean, she's helped other people open their restaurants. She curates uh, menus for other well-known establishments and had never really been doing it for herself on, like, a bigger scale, like, this is how I could pay my bills type of thing. So after that first weekend, it was kind of just like a jug, and we wanted to do it the right way because when you're dealing with food, you can't. Um, well, you can, but when you know better, you do you better. Do better. <laughs> so, right. um, so, you know, um, so once we got it right, we kind of just kept rolling with it. Weekend after weekend, we were doing these pop-ups, and it grew from a tent to deciding, like, we should take this mobile if it's possible mm -hmm. because she had already been in a brick-and-mortar location mm -hmm. and didn't want to be stuck in a particular space. Right. Um, so the pandemic happened, and... She woke up one day and was like, I'm buying a food truck. All right. Chef <laughs> Key, Chef <laughs> Key. Uh, tell us a little bit about your culinary background and, you know, why plant-based and just, you know, just give us a little bit of your backstory concerning uh, the food industry. Uh, it's kind of funny because growing up, um, I was a little kid that ran past the kitchen, didn't want to do anything in the kitchen from pick up dishes to doing anything but tasting the food like I always would stick my fork inside anything that was in that was ready because I was always the kid that was ready to eat but never wanted to pick up a uh dishes or a spoon to help anybody so it was kind of funny how everybody um uh, look at me now and like yo this is what you do you actually a chef and it started out uh Back in 2011, my best friend got me a job at Ruby Tuesdays. Yeah. I started out as a dishwasher. Right. Um, just good work ethics. Ended up moving up and started as a line cook. And um, after that, I actually got a passion for it because it came easy and I like to eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm extra yeah. in life. Uh, OCD. <laughs> On so, everything. yeah, so, like, it became a passion, honestly, yeah. after that. Um Growing up, my parents, my mom, my auntie, um, grandma, they stayed in the kitchen. It's a southern thing. Southern like, the closest thing to your heart is your stomach. So, yeah. you know, you love your people, you're going to feed your people. And that's true, how we true. got together. Facts, and, facts, facts. and that's, that's how we the still, only way she could get me to come over. Exactly. Yeah, okay. exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's another story <laughs> for the books. For the but. Book. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so... Um, so why a food truck business versus a sit-down restaurant? I um, wanted to take it worldwide. Like, I didn't want to be stationary. Yeah. I 
believe that um, our business um, got something special and everybody mm -hmm. should be able to, you know, indulge and try it. So right. I wanted to take it on the road, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. hit Cali, you know, North America, right. put it on a boat, you yeah. know, we in St. <laughs> Thomas with it, Whatever. you know. So, yeah. yeah, I didn't want any limitations on where we could go gotcha. with the business. Yeah. It's probably more cost effective, I'm sure. Um, uh, I mean, degree. to a certain degree, yeah. so we, um, not as much overhead, but okay, physical work is definitely you know. Yeah, there's involved, literally right? more moving parts than if then, you were to have a restaurant. But overhead, I mean, you don't have the the full establishment. But Atlanta is not a food truck friendly space, so cost wise, which we found out along the way, you have to get what they call a commissary, which is your base of operations. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's really just a space that has a three compartment sink and somewhere for you to dispose of your, your gray your water waste. and things like that, right. your waste. Mm -hmm. um, but in Atlanta, it, there are far and few between, there's not a lot of spaces that even exist for that, for that to even, for you to be legal right. essentially. Mm -hmm. And the places that they deem as commissaries are far and few between. So if you wanted to go and build one out to get it, licensed i mean we waited almost three years for ours yep with them having our money mm. i won't name no, the county but mm. <laughs> but it yeah it's yeah. it's atlanta is just not a food truck friendly place it is becoming more food truck friendly now that the pandemic and everybody was forced to do to-go businesses a lot of larger right. brands started mm. to try to go mobile and realize that the legislation that's in place right now is not really beneficial for a mobile You're business friendly to us or equal mm. yeah oh, okay. yeah but they're yeah. making changes all right I want to touch on budget and cost. Okay. Um, where were your startup costs, you know, to get the food truck business going, mm -hmm. to equip it with the proper um, equipment, licenses, permits, things of that nature? Just give us just a small breakdown of the startup costs. Okay. Um, so your truck itself, you can go, if you're doing it bare bones, we purchased the truck um, prefabbed. Somebody had their financing fell through, so we came up on a truck, luckily, on Facebook Marketplace. So you can look on the buy here type of places and buy one out, but you got to know what you're looking for because there's a lot of people selling duds. Don't buy anything from flooding states. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same as buying a car if you're going to buy a used car. Right. Um, but as far as the shell of a truck, you could probably get one for $5,000, and then after that, you're going to probably put another 20 in it just because kitchen equipment and, itself is expensive. into the build out exactly right. and it then really, it depends on like what's your business so exactly you have a lot of barbecue trucks which you know they're right. going to put a lot of fire pits and the everything grill. grills and everything in the back of right. theirs mm -hmm. and then you know you got a lot of people who do seafood and or new orleans style gumbo so they probably need a lot of uh refrigeration refrigerations and mm -hmm. uh stove tops right. and all that so it's, mm -hmm. it's just mainly depending on yeah what, what you really need right. you know um um, what, would I, you, what would you say of your biggest cost? Uh, my biggest cost, I would say my truck. Yeah, the food truck and, uh, and all, like, with the equipment included was my biggest cost. Oh, okay. Um, thus far. It's still growing because we <laughs> we had to add on and everything. Um, but, yeah, out of, right out of pocket in the lump sum, I have to say, was my, you know, getting my food truck and getting it fully equipped. Getting fully equipped. Uh, let's touch on revenue. Um, what's a good day and a bad day, dollar wise? <laughs> Sometimes, like we've been out there known to make maybe a hundred dollars. Sometimes, and sometimes we can pull out of there and make three thousand dollars. And depending on the hours as well, we can sit and make three thousand dollars in four hours, or we can sit and make a hundred dollars in four hours. Mm -hmm. It just totally depends on your crowd, what festival you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you end up popping up somewhere, you know, just make sure that it's in like a public place. Right. Um, High traffic location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Definitely. High traffic doesn't necessarily even equal. Promise. money that doesn't yeah. necessarily mean anything because you can be in an area that people are going by but if your hours that you're open are you know during commuter hours and people don't necessarily have time to just stop because the food truck isn't fast food yeah. everything's cooked That's to true. order for the most part so if you don't have the time to wait to at wait. least 10 right. minutes i mean the majority of our items are there everything is made to order for except for the cobbler or drink you know mm -hmm. could be quick or maybe if you get a biscuit five minute turnaround but everything's made to order so if you're not making sure that you're in a location that patrons can actually come you have proper right, parking right. it's not you know, like they're on their lunch break and they have exactly five or i mean now some places you can do right. that and if you're in those areas like when we set up at hospitals or things where you do need to do a quick turnaround then right. 
you may need to tweak your menu if it doesn't, you know, already allot you to do something that's a quick scoop and go or a grab and go option. I got you. Um, yeah. Which, you know, fortunately with our business, our menus, they change with the season. We partner with local farms and our menu is always curated of what is available mm-hmm. to the people. So that helps with, you know, mm-hmm. our business model not being stuck. Okay. Um, back to startup cost. What would you say your startup cost was? Like fifty thousand? Mm, easily, 30, yeah, about forty five thousand. Forty five. Forty five thousand. That includes the trailer. Some. The, well, honestly, okay, we got a trailer. So with the trailer, you need something to pull the trailer with. Right. Why did I get a trailer before a food truck? Is because food truck. You can easily go out like the engine can go out and then your yeah. your business is totally you destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's a good point. You know, you could be in the midst or in transition of going to an event and yeah. something you go got wrong. Maintenance and fuel costs. There you go. Um, yeah. but I can easily drop my trailer and call my dad and like, hey dad, I need yeah, you to so. drop my trailer at this spot, you know, and boom, or I can keep you haul or rent a U haul or anything, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's the reason why. But with something to pull it with and the trailer, I believe you walking out roughly about seventy five thousand. Yeah, seventy five thousand. What you're towing vehicle is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seventy five thousand, and that's mm-hmm. without permits or anything else. That's just mainly the trailer with equipment and something to pull it with. Right. What would you say is your average profit per month? Uh. It varies. Yeah. It varies month to month, just depending on what we have going on. Uh, if we're doing a heavy catering month, I mean, it could be 30000 depending on what's going on. If you're doing just vending for that month, it could be half twelve. Yeah. yeah, it could be 12 It really yeah. just depends. I mean, we are true entrepreneurs in the sense that we are evenly yoked in business and pleasure. Right. Uh, we party just as much as we yeah. work. Yeah. Um, so it really just depends on the month. If we have a great month and sales were phenomenal, then we're mm-hmm. like, you trying to go to Barbados? Like we <laughs> we're yeah. out. Let's we're go. out. Like Let's so go. so we're we're not concrete in our hours. So as far as month oh. to month, it's not our our revenue is not the same. So yeah. Definitely try to have that on. balance. Like yeah. it's important. It's important. Okay. Yeah. And uh locations. I mean how do you pick locations? So, was it because I know it's there's a lot of food parks here in mm-hmm. Atlanta. I know they have a lot of new ones that they're setting up currently. Yeah. Like you said, it depends on which county you're in. So, how do you know which location is going to be more profitable versus another location? Yeah, so I the know a lot of truck, people struggle with that. The food truck parks are great, they're phenomenal. Um, they definitely are trying, and I will say trying because the counties restrict them from allowing a lot of business to be able to come out. The requirements that are on the food truck side are quite they dig deep in your pocket. So then if you have to do that to go to each each county you need a permit for. Anywhere you pull your truck, oh, okay. it's not like a driver's license or a you gun license. You can just pull up and one. go wherever. No, you yeah. want to pull up somewhere. If we had the truck with us today, we would need to go and get for DeKalb County. We would need to go. If we want to go to Fulton County, you need to Fulton County. And then even more so if you go in the city, then you need a city of Atlanta. So it yeah. just get depending on where you are, the, it can get deep on top of your feet. So Every first, we always look at that. Right. So what were some of those requirements that they... Um, so every place is kind of different. Like some places will have a flat fee. They'll say, you know, $200 a day. Some, some, like if you want to do a larger, uh, jazz festival type of thing, they may say $2,000 a day plus 10% of your sales. Yeah. So then at that point you're like, okay, well, maybe I need to ask you a couple questions. We have a questionnaire that we send out that asks how many other food trucks are going to be there, how many of them are going to be vegan, right. how many guests do you right. do you expect? Or is this a paid ticket? Because if you pay, you know, as a patron, if you pay for a ticket and then you get there and you're like, dang, now I got to pay for That's food, cool. yeah. I may need to change my prices because I can't right. be selling $20 plates if you pay 50 to get in That's right. type of thing. So it's kind of case by case. Okay. Like you have to kind of, okay. you got to be very particular and strategic about the questions you ask the mm-hmm. promoter or the organizer. Um, but for us with the mobile business, we find that doing catering events or doing, um, going on set, like movie sets where they're essentially saying we have X amount of people beforehand, this is our budget. And then you're getting paid before you even pull out. Are those some of the best? I mean, that's what I prefer. Some people like that heavy grind. Securing the check. (laughs) Securing the the bag early. Um, Which is the preference. But when you vend, you just need to be very mindful of those questions that you ask. Because some coordinators or organizers, they're not thinking about Mm. 
that it's quote unquote a competitor. They'll have two barbecue trucks right next to each other, two ice cream trucks right next to each other, or seven candle makers or whatever it is that you do. If you're not asking, like after you buy your first candle, like you might smell the other ones, but you're not going to keep buying $30 candles because you want to support everybody's business and the same works for food. So like a, just say a a movie studio production company, how is that process? Do you have to call and get on a waiting list or is there a contract or? There's always a contract. (laughs) There's always a contract. Um, We've been blessed that um, we know a lot of people in the industry. So people, when we they found out we had a food truck, food it was truck. easy to say, oh, well, we're going to get what craft services and let yeah, them know that yeah. you exist. Right. Um, we're in a niche market being plant-based, so a lot of trucks yeah, don't true. offer that. So, and a lot of these stars or whoever are on set performers, they are requesting that. So by yeah. default, even if we're not fe- feeding the entire crew, we get contacted yeah. just to do Anywhere. the one-offs, like whoever right. it is right. that's... Um, that you know, of course, that wants we plant-based want, want food. Plant so based sometimes, food. and even in that, that can be lucrative because you're doing a custom menu at that point. They're not even right, getting right. the truck, and they just want, you know, one meal for one person. It's still $100. Right. Like, it doesn't... That kind of gets into private catering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So Which we also open some other doors. offer as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I want to touch on menu. Okay. I know you have a, a vast selections on your menu. Who comes up with the idea of what goes on the menu and all you do, let me sample this, let me get some family members over to try this? Um, All of the above. How does does that process work? It's definitely a team effort. Uh, We come up with cravings. Um, Danielle would be like, yo, babe, check this recipe out. You think you can make it, but I know you can make it and twist it up and make it as your own thing. So I always take it as a challenge, (laughs) and that's how we end up coming up with just random menus and menu ideas. Um, My family loves it they uh, they'll come eat at our house and then turn around and try to make it back at home right. so i know i put a staple in, <laughs> in that so and they are far from anything close to plant-based oh okay? for sure like, for sure these folks are still eating chillings okay yeah. <laughs> like, like they, are, <laughs> yes. they are not concerned right. Right. but yeah i mean a lot of it is just based off of travel and mm-hmm. wanting what we you know when you go vegan or whatever it is whenever you're doing a, a diet transition a lot of the complicated side is because you're going to miss like, oh, man, I'm going to miss a crab boil. Oh, I'm going to yep. miss my mama's chicken and dumplings or whatever it is. Like whatever it is that I crave that I used to eat is how we make the menu. Because yep. in Atlanta, I don't know how often you go out and eat plant based options. Everybody has a burger. Everybody has yeah, fried cauliflower. Yeah. Everybody got a salad. It might be a really nice one, but it's right. not like right. you're not on a diet like that. You're right, trying right. to eat and survive. And right. if you're sitting next to somebody else having a five course beautifully laid out meal and you're over there eating nothing you're upset about it and you still got to cash out so really we just wanted to bring our people elevated healthy experiences because we deserve it too right do you have a signature dish that you're known for I, I w- which it's kind of like sl- you know it's yeah. kind of how slutty vegan branded yeah. herself. Um, well, it started out as our sometimey burgers. Like yeah. we, st- I started grilling, marketing like out my trunk, my <laughs> burgers, going to like each building, selling them my burgers, and um, that was our first staple, what we was known for. And then uh, we got the truck and started building out more menus. And now people love our yakisoba um, noodles. Oh, okay. And now they like our fillies and like, right. you know. So it's so not one. It's not one, one that signature. we're known of yet. And right. then our rusted apple cobbler that we brought you all today. Like, okay. you yeah, know. The cobbler is right. the only thing that actually stays on the menu year round. Everything else changes. But we've tried to take the cobbler off and people are like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, back. what? Bring like, I only back. came yeah. for the cobbler. For the cobbler. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that's the only thing that really says, so I would say the cobbler, but I would think it's the noodles. They've kind of made their way as a staple the to noodles. Yeah. The yakisoba noodle. Yeah, is I have the, to try that. I'm going to have to try the noodles. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a, um, it's like a dry ramen noodle with a, a house Manchurian sauce with sautéed peppers, onions, bok choy, mm-hmm. broccoli, red and yellow cabbage. Mm-hmm. Let's get into ingredients. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us about some of the ingredients that you use that are plant-based and what separates, you know, your um your items versus someone else uh we try to switch up you know we don't like using basic vegetables we try to like um try to like i said switch it up we'll grab um Anoki mushrooms. Uh, yeah. You know, we'll we'll pull out something that you haven't heard before. Oyster mushrooms, we got seafood mushrooms, some that you know not somebody like the average person be like, okay, about, you know, we'll like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, even with the flavor, honestly, I think right. our season and um, 
just separate us from a lot of um, other oh companies. Um, just the loving in our food, you know. With the flavor. Uh, right. And then it's a lifestyle for us. It's just not a business. Like, yes. this is our lifestyle. So right. it's, it's passion. You know what I mean? Right. You, you can tell the difference, you know. You can't. You can't try to beat the cold <laughs> without having, yeah, 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 right, yeah. Right, right. yeah. So you can taste the love in our food, basically. So I got you. Yeah. Um, as far as food costs, with the rising inflation, has that affected your business and the prices in which you charge for your for Absolutely. your food items? Absolutely. Uh, sure. We cut the fryers off completely. 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 The co the cost of oil went from twenty dollars to sixty. Overnight. Ooh. Like, it was like we bought That's some today house, and then man. went the next day and we're like, oh, the sticker right. is wrong. Like, this right. is before they were talking about <laughs> yeah. inflation. Like, you did, yeah, we're right. just in Restaurant Depot like, oh, they made a mistake, get right. to the front. And they're like, that'll be $300. And we're like, oh, we have, like, nothing here. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, can you recount? You can't do it again. And, and right. Restaurant Depot is like Sam's where they're, like, counting all your items right. before you check out. So you're like, yeah, I only see eight boxes. Like, you're confused right. as to where the math is even Is it cheaper around. when you go to food wholesalers or tell us about yes uh, and no. what, what is some of the companies that you all use to um, purchase your food and wholesale? Uh, Restaurant Depot, all the wholesalers, Costco, Sam's Club. Um, we go to all of them and then farmers markets and local um, local farmers and growers. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think when you're going vegetable route, go local. That's always going to be the better bet. They're, gonna, they're going to sow into your business because they don't want any waste. The period yes. like they're growing it mm -hmm. they send it to places and whenever the vegetables go like if they have a really big contract and they send it out and they have any bruised items or things like that they don't look grocery store ready they're going to get thrown away so they would rather go to somebody who knows that all fruits and vegetables aren't perfect right. and will actually work with what they got um, so you're going to always get a better deal if you go straight to the man go straight to the source first same goes to if you're a meat-based business go to the butcher don't go to the grocery store like go directly to the, the farmer get your food there yeah, right. you always get a better probably deal. get a larger quantity too. absolutely sure. and you'll yeah. know what's in your food period That's like true. you'll just know what, exactly not, right. you can ask the questions I got you. um and then when it comes to like packaging like if you like your to-go wares and things like that you kind of got to shop around because they're all competitors. They're looking at each other's prices and each week it's not the same, especially with this inflation stuff that we're still experiencing. Um, you kind of got to shop around depending on where you're going to be. And I'm sure just as going out to eat yourselves, you can't be stuck on one item because it's not going to be available. If you, you know, you like this really cute box that you think this is perfect for our cupcakes next week, you're going to go and they're like, Good luck. Like there was a point where I'm, we we make our uh, custom lemonades and we used to always bottle them and use a specific cup. They did not have our cups for six months. Literally no plastic cup, yeah. no plastic lids, period. Yeah. The clear regular cups that you get to go places. Right. Non-existent. And let's talk about branding. What are some of the strategies that you use to um, to brand your company? Yeah. Is it more like uh, see a lot of companies have their logo on the cups? Mm -hmm. Or their bags that have the logo with the packaging, like you just kind of mentioned. Let's talk about some of your branding strategies. Uh, we honestly, to be for uh, real, we still struggling with trying to brand ourselves. Um, just being open and honest. Um, that's one of the hardest and toughest things to um, do right now. Um, like I said, we got hats, we got you know merch, uh, we have stickers as well. Um, but I like that's that's in the budget too, you know, that costs as well. Um mm -hmm. but we try to do as much as we can, social media, try to mm -hmm. brand ourselves. Um we still looking to rebrand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but as all entrepreneurs, it's like wearing a million hats. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, if I you're if you yeah. don't work in branding and marketing and you're figuring it out, you know, every day we're self teaching ourselves right. how to use yeah, Canva yeah, yeah, yeah. and whatever it yeah. is, outside of if we're not hiring somebody, which like she said, it's, you know, then is that in the budget? You always have to put it in the yeah, budget in some type of way. Always, yeah. um, but how deep do you want to dive into it? How well do yeah. you know somebody who's actually going to give you something in return? I'm a creative, so sometimes I see people's work and I'm like, we paid for this? Question mark. Well, like, I, you know, I, 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 so it just depends. I'm you know, struggling with that now. Exactly, I know all I mean, too well. When you, and then if you're a perfectionist, you know what you envision yes, for your company. Right, yeah. I mean, that's where the struggle is. So, you know, listeners, if you're in branding and marketing and you'd like to hit us up, check us out. We'll love to see what you got going on. But it's it's. You know, that is definitely a struggle. If you were to say, where's our biggest struggle, it would definitely be branding and marketing because it's a learning curve. Like, it's okay. it's taking the time to actually 
you know, learn the tips and tricks on what are the right mm-hmm. ways to actually go about doing that okay. outside of mm-hmm. word of mouth. Okay. And uh, how's the ordering process? Do you all do um, the delivery apps? How's that particular part of your business working? Do you use DoorDash, Uber Eats, or that's part of your yeah. strategy that you use to keep sales coming in? I know the fall winter season is coming, so I'm pretty sure you're looking at yeah. um, how to strategize for that because I'm sure Absolutely. the lines are going to kind of slow down versus with the weather. Yeah, so actually food truck season is technically over as far as seasonally. Seasonal. Um, right. it, it ends at the end of um July is technically the end. Like when they close the pools is when you're supposed to pack up your food truck for the season. Oh yeah. Um, We primarily like roll into Mm -hmm. heavy catering come the winter seasons because it's holiday season. So we start promoting all of the our holiday menus, and that's primarily where we pull in our money is all catering orders and doing holiday parties. And some people do want the truck, and we'll pull up to their businesses and do things like that. Um. But yeah, it. It starts to get tricky come the winter. <laughs> okay. Because I wanted to make sure you had a strategy in place, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. said the catering would be yeah. definitely um, a good strategy to use during the, uh, the holiday season. Uh, how many people would you say you serve on average? Uh, okay. During the food truck or catering-wise? In, in, in the food truck. Uh, like I said, it depends on where we at. If we do a pop-up like somewhere randomly on side of the road, we'll probably serve maybe 100. 50 to 100 people. We do a festival. It can be minimum of 200 people to maybe about five sits. We'll see. Okay. And sometimes, like I said, we do a catering event where we'll pull up the truck and they might have a thousand people out there who we cater or a wedding who might have like two or three hundred people that we right. cater to. It just it just depends. OK. And what separates um, your company from other food trucks? What separates you from your competition? I say our passion, honestly, Um just for me, like I said, uh, it's a lifestyle for us. Um, and it's really no, like, our our thing is we don't try to compete with anybody. We would like to see everybody win. Um, so I just have to say, like, our passion and our flavor, you know. Nobody, that and willingness to share. If I would actually say one thing that really stands out about other food trucks is our willingness to share. Because there was a time before we had a truck. Tell you. And we'd go up and we'd ask, like, oh, how'd you get your truck? Or where'd you get your truck? And it would kind of, I mean, if they answered you, it would kind of be like a one of those, like, we'll get back to you type of things. Like, I'm not really willing to give you the full sauce. Mm. Because some people, you know, they don't want to, yeah. you know, yeah. lift. They're like, I favorite. work hard for this, so you're going to make you work hard now, for it. Ain't nothing come easy. Yeah, you got to yeah. figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah now yeah, yeah. people will come to me, and it gets to the point where I'm like, I low-key might need to send an invoice because I am giving you all of the juice because yeah. it was a struggle. Like, the permitting side, if you're listening, you're trying to open up a food truck, hit us up. I'm not going to charge you. I'm going to give you a nice little brief rundown. But it's definitely a... It might be another extension of your business, food truck consulting. It is, but it's it's not. I thought about it, but it's it's a lot. I would rather just ask like a a one-off question, but to actually like help guide somebody through, it's very... I mean, it could be a business, but it would have to be what I want to do because it's right. very specific. It's or do a workshop or it's definitely do a yeah, live could, stream but that's the and thing. charge people $99 truck, to come in. It's not that easy. Like, you would love to be able to stream streamline it and just give a brinkly course, but it's right. so Every county, different. county specific and business specific yeah, because right. with us being food-based, a lot of the rules that currently existed, we were able to find the loopholes around them because we don't have meat. Yeah. So cross-contamination, okay. the things that, in the very beginning, when we got our truck was 2020, so everybody was shut down. Yeah. There was no getting Pre-pandemic. any type of permit. You weren't going to get your license. It didn't matter because the health department mm. was closed. So were you operating during the pandemic? Absolutely, we were operating because mm. everybody else else was operating their businesses we still needed to eat yeah. absolutely we were operating however we did it legally by getting what they call is a a, uh, a, a mobile cottage a license. cottage license which allows you to operate out of your house however if you operate out of your home your menu has to be very specific and it has to be everything is done specifically out of your oven yep. and they have to come in mm. view your facilities and yep. all of those things do people go. actually check do you have a license i mean it's yeah. like yeah. A, oh yeah, a yeah. Oh, police yeah. officer or they do they? oh yeah. and it's definitely yeah. 12 okay <laughs> because we've i can't we've picture been a policeman there. coming around to a food truck yeah i couldn't oh, either until i saw those like are five. people who um <laughs> honestly come they come with the health department so they oh. need yeah because it can get ugly out there um 
Yeah, because people some, get fined. I know some people it's just pull up. And, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah how, much is the, how much is the fine? Ooh, it minimum 1200 $1, Minimum $12. And that's like your first one. Yeah. Oh, and then God. after that, they're like, here's a steeper one. And then your you third shut one. Shut you down. You're not getting a license again. Like, Ever. you yeah. will rebrand and yep. find a whole other company name because you can no and, longer have a business. Or in this county. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, oh, it gets it, serious it, when you're dealing with food. Some good information. Yeah. So how do you keep repeat customers coming back? Um, we use a lot of text messaging marketing. We have um, keeping the same flavor. <laughs> that yeah. yeah, consistency. <laughs> we we definitely and then we sew into it. We treat everybody like their family. Yeah. I try to remember your name. I'm a face person, so I might not necessarily know your name, but I always will know your face that I saw you somewhere and where I seen you from. Um, so just making it personable, making sure people feel like they're at home. Um, we offer what we call as the secret menu item, which rotates either daily or weekly, just depending on what the harvest is looking like. And all of our regulars know that that's what you can get. That's always going to change. And it's going to be like coming home to dinner and you don't know what your mama made, but it's going to be good type of thing. Um, so I think a lot of our current clientele, that's what they look for. They immediately come back saying like, what's the secret menu item? They are not even, they know we have standard menu items but they specifically want whatever the special, the special is they don't is. even care yeah. they're yeah. like i want the special no questions asked yeah good good <laughs> uh stress let's talk about stress Ooh. uh just give us one or two of your biggest um struggles on a daily basis that you have to deal with that you hate permitting permitting for sure <laughs> um that was our biggest stress like we said it took us two years to actually get legit like the permitting process was pulling hairs you had um you had to talk to different people um like at a like each day you had to call them back and make sure they doing That's their cool job one. and make sure like um when is the license when coming is, right or yeah. when, it, no, when, when are they gonna, when, when are, are you gonna start when the process i mean it's a very annotated antiquated mm. system that they're right. using i mean it, you gotta think if you're dealing with government on anything any level it's always going to be long and drawn right. out and it's a process so we're looking process. at six months to a year or something like that? Or more, or depending more. on what they come out and find. Because if yes. the fire department comes out and says, oh, you need a new su- fire suppression, marshal. the fire, fire marshal can come. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They come out and say, oh, you need to fix this. Then the health department pushes back because you got to get that. And then they can right. come check it off. And then the code enforcer comes and yeah. says, oh, you need this. Pushes so another department back. Or yeah. you got to mm-hmm. wait because code enforcement might say, I can't come see you for another three months. So regardless of up. how ready health department oh, was, God. you got to wait three months for them to come. Yeah. And then three months pass, they come and call health department like, we got what we need from code. And they're like, oh, well, yeah, the waiting list is six months. Right. We can come out and see you in six months. And then when they come, what you got from code has now expired because they only gave you 30 60 days to get it done so it's constantly going up mm-hmm. and it's all money because everybody wants right. they money up from front. 50 to 200 dollars everybody front. before you get your permit you're paying them do you have to renew every year or yes. is that yes. quarterly every or every year every, every year. year every year okay it's like a driver's license mm-hmm. right uh, what would you say are the pros and cons of owning a food truck just just give us a couple nothing the pros is that um it's yours, you know what I'm saying? And nothing like entrepreneurship, like owning something and you'll be able to um, hand it down and, you know, it stays in your family and, you know. Um, but the cons, uh, I can say, is it's yours. So, like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> everything that um, that when it comes down to paperwork and stuff is on you. Um, that and finding it, your drive. Because when you go to work every day, you got hired for one role in a company. You know, no matter how big or small it is, if you get hired for a startup and there's 10 people, you're only one-tenth of the equation. When you start that company, if you have zero employees, no partners, it is you. Yeah, so from true. everything, from you customer service, all of that. Chef. You don't like talking to people. She's, she's a very shy person in the moment. So even having yeah. this, saying the camera is here, we're on mics, all of this yeah. is very out of her regular whatever. She don't seem like it. No. Now. Because we prepped. I <laughs> asked you, is oh, okay, there going to be okay, cameras? Okay. Or we know that now. We got to yeah, ask you these did questions in advance. Question. You did so I can say, like, you're going to be I'm like, little baby. I'm like, I had to change my way. So, you know. All of those things become learning curves. You get hired for your wheelhouse, but when you decide you want, you know, you have to bring that business into your passion. Mm-hmm. So nice. you can say, I like to cook, but if you don't know how to talk to people and sell your product, your then it doesn't service. matter. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter yeah. that your food yeah. tastes yeah. good. Yeah. Unless it's a Jamaican restaurant, then you want that ras. You know, <laughs> right, that's right, how right. I know the food is going to yes. be good. Yes. Like, that's if she, true. if she wasn't mean to me, right. I'm questioning the sauce. <laughs> but... 
all jokes aside, like that is definitely the hardest part is that you have to now run your business, the day to day operations. You have to wake yourself up, create a calendar, definitely stick to discipline. it. Yeah, the discipline side, there is no, I mean, you can call out and say, I need the day off, but depending mm. on the type of brand you're running, right. it may be one of those no off days type yeah, of business you have for a to while. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So how many days um, is your truck in operation? Is it a seven day or you guys kind of do it just can be a five seven day days, week? Five or? days, three days, like depending on uh, what events we have. Now we're set up right now in um, Oakhurst and Decatur from Mon Monday through Wednesdays from nine to two. I'm trying to see, you know, um, get a new um, area and they don't have any vegan um, spots over there. So. Mm -hmm. Desert spots for a vegan spot, you know, a restaurant. So we're trying to see how, that works how that's going to work. Right. And then we also have events on during the weekend as well, like pop-up okay. festivals, okay. events that we do. So right. it can go from either three days to seven days. Hmm. But the thing is, like we said, we're permitting the cab counter and everything. They only allow you to be out um, per day operating mats for like six hours. A day. Oh, that is crazy. Yeah, yeah, so you can't be open. About once you got the permit, you can oh, do no. as much time as you. Oh like, no, it's because of want. refrigeration. Because you're mobile, they know that technically you can only keep a certain amount of food stored for a properly right. at a certain right amount right of temperature. Time. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. after so six hours gone by, regardless of what kind of extra storage you have, yeah. something is starting to lose its quote unquote temp. Like it's correct temperature. Oh. So if you're, you know, if you're operating your business at the very least, you're supposed to go back to your base of operations, operations reset, 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 and then go back yeah. out. Mm -hmm. So you could technically do two 12 hour shifts, but you have to break it up. You got to close in the middle and figure out the time the to go other, and refresh go and go back out. Yeah. But I mean, most businesses don't. I mean, because you're on, it's not a brick and mortar. So the right. way you run your business is a little different. Oh, okay. Because you're okay. taking everything with you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as well, you also have to shoot a log out, a route log out to the health department to let them know where, where you're you, going to be, where you're going to set up at as well. So you can't just they want that every it up. Day? Absolutely. Because oh, yeah. they want, just like a restaurant, to pop up on you and do a health mm -hmm. inspection. And then you got to also send them your menu. So, mm -hmm. you know, once you change your menu, you got to shoot them a message like, hey, my menu changed I up. I did not know. Oh, oh, that took oh place. Yeah. yeah, like it's constantly yeah. each week updating somebody else about your route and your menu yeah. and everything. And, and they, they can just pop and they up. They give you the okay. Just, you gotta right. wait for the okay. And once they send you the okay back, then, then you can go. You go. Yeah, right. you can make that change. Mm -hmm. Which is why when people reach out and they're like, "Why don't you come over here?" and you're like. I we would love to, but it's, it's not. The law. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, it is technically against the law. You know, they'll say, "Oh, this this parking line, you have to be." I think it's like four hundred feet 500 away, five hundred feet away, away from a, another food establishment. Yep. As a mobile mobile food business, you have to be five hundred feet away from an actual brick and mortar that. without yep. their permission. So, if there's a restaurant there, like where we are now. There is a, a bar that's about. It's more than five hundred feet away from where our actual truck is, but technically, DeKalb County could say. If that restaurant wasn't okay with us being there, we need to leave. Yep. Right. The restaurant will win. Okay. I've also heard um, from me talking to some other food truck drivers. They say it's best to stay at one location over a certain period of time, maybe like a year, mm -hmm. to kind of build your base, your customer base. Yeah, following. Is that important versus keeping the truck mobile all the time? Or I, mean, I think it just depends on how you start it, too. Yeah. You know, if you have the type of business where you've always been mobile, like some people stay underground and it's like right. pickups, I do drops or whatever, you know, like how we started. It was we only did Burger Friday to the public. If you wanted to catch us, it was on a Friday and people new like i gotta hit you up and see where you're gonna be dropping burgers so if you already start because that's how pinky did with slutty vegan she wasn't always in the same spot you had to follow her get her text messages be on instagram and catch instagram the truck essentially yeah. um but yes if you're gonna if you want an actual following and you want a standard location it's brand for brand kind of makes that decision for themselves whether or not staying in a location but finding that actual spot it's that isn't going to charge difficult. you yeah. because most people going to want something for you to be oh, on their yeah. property. Right. That is legal that you can get signed off on. If you can find a spot that's lucrative, then I will always, I tell people when they ask all the time, I would always get a permanent spot. If you can have your own spot that you can go to with no questions asked any day of the week, then that's I would do it. Right. Right. However, then you got to ask yourself, is it, you know, going to mm -hmm. pull in your business? Right. Um, franchising. We're going to talk about that for a minute. Is that something in your future plans? As far as franchising, opening up, uh, maybe getting a sit-down location, or you just want to um, get more food trucks and just kind of expand to different 
counties? Uh, all of the above. The sky is not the limit. Like, uh, I was thinking about that on the way here. Like, it can open up to being, like, food trucks. It can even open up to be, like, a food hall. And it can be, like, a sometime vegetarian food hall, which we have um, vegan options. But it's, it can be a fusion. So you got a barbecue vegan spot here, blah, blah, blah. You know, I ain't trying to spill out all my ideas because we got listeners. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like honestly, sky's the limit. Yeah. I think sometime yeah. vegetarian started out as, like, a community thing anyway so i like to um continue you know making it that so franchising would be uh amazing you know each one teach one reach one so yeah that'd be dope so if i wanted my own sometime materian food truck i can you can license that out to me and oh yeah, oh, yeah for sure as long as you you know yeah. operate by the same codes and everything that we abide by and well, i'm sure people that's your vibe that a little bit later oh yeah, yeah and that's your vibe then i All right. For sure, you know that's that's something that we can bring up. But you know, if I feel like you ain't gonna hold the brand <laughs> right, I think I still have the rights to you know pull back as well. You know? I guess <laughs> I can agree with that. Um, is there anything else you all want to touch on? Any advice or tips for anyone wanting to start a food truck business? I say if you want to start a food truck business, I suggest going ahead and putting yourself on the wait list for a commissary. Absolutely, because the wait list can be anywhere from six months to two years long because they, I mean, once you get a truck and you get your commissary, you would essentially have to close your business or grow your business to leave that commissary space because it's mandatory. So you're just going to keep renewing your lease. You're not going to ever leave and you'd have to do something very crass to get kicked out. When you say commissary space, what is that? For it's your base of operations. It's um, essentially the, just the place that you go and reset. You store all of your dry the, the storage. Floor. Your food is there. Yeah. That's where you go and dispose of all of your waste. Yeah. Um, it's but a it's spot Anderson where North. the health department know that they can go and check your um, you know, okay. check your kitchen out. It's like right. when you have a restaurant, basically. Is there, so a, it's our is there a fee for that? Oh, yeah. is, there? is there? It's probably right. the biggest fee we have. Yeah. It's like paying for an apartment. Right. Like, like apartment and Buckhead. Yeah. What would be the cost? Like five hundred. Min- oh no, minimum twelve hundred to anywhere between twenty two. Right. And month. we're talking a ten by ten room, smaller than so you know. This is a room half mm-hmm. this size. So that's where you prep the food and prep so you're, you're the storage. Food, storage mm-hmm. the food. You um. So you can't you do cook. it at home. Nope. Nope. It's against health because right. technically the health department the cannot just pull up for, to right. your house right. and check it any time of the day. It was like a code requirement. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. yeah. So I definitely would get on the waiting list for that immediately. Prep Atlanta is the first thing that's going to come up. Uh, their waiting list is the longest. There are a couple of other companies that exist, but they're more of a mom and pop and their lists are almost like non-existent because – they're just such a small of an operation that you got to know somebody to get in. Uh, but that would be what I would look in first is securing that location yeah. and then start actually looking at what type of Equip- equipment you will need. need. Because when we purchased our truck, we were going to have it built out. Um, and the guy who was going to be our builder called us like, hey, somebody's finances fell through. Their truck is ready. Not sure if it'll work for you or not, but it's ready. Right. Um, it wasn't exactly what we envisioned, but the equipment itself was. Would, would qualify what we needed. So right. we ran with it to, instead of just waiting for the perfect right. equation. We can reconfigure at any point. Right. Um, but had we not, we could have potentially overpaid for certain things because if, exactly. ref- if you don't need fryers, if you don't need refrigeration, it just depends on the type of truck do it. you're going to have. You know, you want to make sure you know exactly right. what you're going to need. Right. What would your startup cost for as equipment? Is it better to buy or just least use equipment or i say buy uh, outright they don't have to be brand new either um we was fortunate enough for us to come up and before the pandemic and we was able to get everything brand new it was okay. it was cheaper than it was is now everything and doubled and tripled but i would say literally whatever you want on your truck draw it out Look up the price. You know, you want to build your truck out first on paper, right. on paper before right. anything. And then once mm-hmm. you do that, go and see if you can find a commissary that will fit. Because you will know the size of your truck because you'll need to know the size of your truck, what all um, goes in your truck. Mm-hmm. Um and you'll need to know um, how many um, fires you need, how many burners you need, you know. So yeah, those are the questions that, that all they of your ask. rules change because yep. in the food truck world, size matters. Yeah, like they at Piedmont Park, they charge you by the foot mm-hmm. of your truck how yep. much you're gonna have to pay to vend there because you're essentially mm-hmm. taking up, you know. 
If you, you just have a regular foot, tent, yeah, they do like 10 by 10 spaces. Yeah. So depending on how long your truck is, even though we're in a 7 by 11, a 10 by 10 space means we still need to buy two of those two, 10 two by 10s spaces. to be able to fit within it. Right. So if one space is $1,000 because my truck is longer, which we actually have one of what would be like the smallest trucks you can get or trailers, we still have to purchase two slots. Right. So, so like you're 20 by... It'll be 20 by 20 at that point. Right, but, yeah. I mean, we don't need that much space, but they're going to make Charge you. you. Exactly. Right. So yeah. depending on the type of events you're going to want to do is going to determine how large your, your truck is going to be. We have mm -hmm. a friend who has a barbecue business that mm -hmm. their truck is actually too large for what they actually do. Like, mm -hmm. they, they're, it's sexy. Their truck is nice. nice. They got a $100,000 truck right. that got every bill. Cadillac. Whistle. It mm -hmm. is in that. Mm -hmm. But their menu doesn't even require them to use half of their square footage, so they're paying for it, which is why we didn't mm -hmm. want to rest restaurant initially because you don't want to pay for empty square footage right. losing on the profits. absolutely right. so or maybe reach out to another business and ask them if you could shadow a couple of shifts see if you're even comfortable being in that space because it's tight we're not big people but it's tight so when we, even when we have to hire people how tall are you yeah. can you even comfortably be in here mm -hmm. in this area can you Our stand on top of right. these fryers because in the mm -hmm. winter i mean in the winter you want the fryers because it's, it's warm but in the right. summertime mm -hmm. i mean the fryers themselves are set to 350 your flat top is set to 350 and it's 100 degrees outside no matter if the ac is on or not you in there yeah let's I'm touch on team members for a minute um before we close um, how is, how important is it is getting employees? Oh, um, it's very important. You got to get somebody that you trust, and it's hard to have, have find people that you trust. We was actually talking about this this morning. Um, I got some of my close to my best friends who actually helping me out um, on the food truck, right. and I was explaining how blessed I am to have someone that I can trust because this is my baby and this is my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, right. So with the team members, you got to treat them, you know, like they your family because it's it this is you know your family at the end of the day you'll see them every single you yeah, probably you see them more than you yeah, yeah your family so team members are important um help is important and that's it's hard to ask for help nowadays or just being an entrepreneur period because you want to do it all yeah. yourself yeah. so once you find those right people who's willing to help you and um and budget that in because you're gonna have to yeah. pay them friend yeah. or foe sure. friend yes, or foe sure. because yes, if you sure. want that because you get what you pay for is so if you keep getting a whole bunch of free help eventually you're gonna be like this is not working mm -hmm. out no. right. like you're gonna actually have to look at your numbers and make sure that you can pay somebody an mm -hmm. actual what do you pay them? Wage. What do you pay them per hour? It just depends on the event. Um, yeah. It can go anywhere from eighteen dollars an hour plus tip to yeah. to a flat rate, depending on if they're just coming in to prep. We have some people who come in and prep, and they make a couple hundred dollars a day, just depending on what we're prepping for. Right. Um, but some of our window workers will walk away with four hundred dollars a day just based off the of their tip, tips, the tips, just depending alone. on where yeah. you are. Yeah. We got one um, one girl who I call Miss New York because she like. Folks just be throwing money at her. Like yeah. I'm like, how you get a twenty dollar tip off a drink? Like what happened? But, <laughs> so but they walk with yeah, it. They walk sure. with it. Like so exactly. So you just want to make sure you get somebody that's personable. Yeah. You know, your recruitment process, go to other restaurants. You can't teach people to be personable. You can nope. teach them your mm -hmm. menu, but you can't teach people to sell. Like there's mm -hmm. some certain traits mm -hmm. that you just have to be embedded in people as a person. So right, when you're Facts. looking for right. those people, it can't always be your mama. Like she no. want to help you. Right. Yeah. She wants to help. Right. Yeah. But like you can't always hire your sister, your cousin or whoever is willing to, even though they are like your number one supporter and you know, like that is free labor. Right. They can help, but you have to find like sometimes a behind the scenes gig for them because every right. person, the truck is the image whoever's in the window that's your image that's, that's you can't have your mama back there licking the pot of potatoes exactly. you know what i'm saying yeah, in yeah, front yeah, of that yeah, yeah. somebody chewing <laughs> Finger exactly. Exactly. Right. not knowing not because knowing. everybody needs it now. exactly they think they at home like yeah. mama. because yeah. you're dealing right. with food so everybody really needs to be serve safe compliant they need yes. to be trained yes. we have yeah. gloves you know, on oh, yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. everybody yeah. goes yeah. through a training process we got a, a manual for all of our okay. employees okay. and stuff That's like that good. which is the benefit of her having that knowledge of being in restaurant management right. so if you've never done it before just you know take a couple of e-courses on how to run a restaurant right. google what are different roles on a food truck yeah. you know there's things that you don't know you just don't know until you get in it and you're like oh somebody yeah. actually has to be the accountant keep receipts like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know just research heavily before you start before you invest um if you can get around it like don't finance your truck 
Yeah. Like try your best to try to get Save what you up. can actually afford yeah. because there's a lot of hidden costs in the food business. Yeah. A lot of hidden costs like that you can't control, but you have to do to, in order to continue to roll your business. Like the food costs always changing. If you're a wing business, whoo. Right now, you are in trouble. The The grease, the chicken. The chicken is worse than the grease right now. Especially if that's all you're selling. A wing. I mean, we live in Atlanta. I don't even eat meat. And I heard people talking about the wing shortage. So I'm like. wing capital. (laughs) So, you know, you have to pivot. Don't be afraid to change. Sometimes your business model, which you woke up saying this is my, this is the way I wanted to take my business. You may have to shift it. Like, don't be afraid to take, take a turn. Like, sometimes you're going to have to veer just to can continue to go that way you know yeah. make them two left turns to get back where you was going definitely but the process will slow you down you know what i'm saying but it's definitely not about trying to rush and get to the finish line it's all about like enjoying this journey because if we was to pop off and we, when we first came out with some time tearing if we would have made it in 2019 yeah. no way in the world i would have known as much knowledge as i know now yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody probably would have easily taken advantage of us, you know? Yeah. Well, but they now, did. We yeah. did. Yeah. We've gotten scammed. Yeah, we got scammed. The commissaries. Of time. The commissaries. Yeah. I, know. I know. Like the, the spaces we were talking about, do your research. Same thing. Like, definitely do your research on those commissaries. Make sure that they have what you actually need for your business because a lot of the owners of those spaces don't know what they what they have. And you just need to know what you need. You need to either reach out if you don't know what you need and ask the correct questions, but don't ask the commissary space because we paid months Let's being see. in a space that didn't have what we really needed. Really How needed. we found out was by code enforcement coming yeah. and saying, this is not the right license type. So we went back to them like, why are we paying y'all? Yeah. Again? Please explain. Yeah. Like how, how it was like $7,000 in a hole with them paying them thinking that oh, we God. was paying them for some stuff that, um, they wasn't even doing it. They was lying. Yeah. yeah. They was lying to us. Lying. Like our name yeah. wasn't even on the certificate. Yeah. They presented a certificate and everything and it was, it was all fraudulent. Oh <laughs> like, God. so I'm like, yeah. I mean, we are in Jug city. So if yeah. you live in Atlanta and you're trying to do this, you need to cross all your T's, dot your I's, yes. research, research, research. Yes. Definitely ask around yes. I mean you can look up what other businesses are at these commissaries call them and ask them how they feel about these spaces like ask what is your monthly overhead because they're not don't all be afraid to ask questions like reach out to you know food trucks and ask them like you know if they don't respond to you cool ask somebody else and you definitely will want to know before you spend money or There's sign on the dotted line because once you're in it everybody has a year contract that's it right you in right. Great advice, and uh, I want to thank you all for coming out to this podcast episode, and I want our listeners and everybody that's watching this podcast today to definitely um, follow their advice. I'm sure they gave some great tips, some great information that you all can learn from for those people who are interested in starting a food truck business. And we want to thank Sometime Materian for coming out. Yeah. And we definitely want you all to leave your contact information. How can they reach you? If you need to book the truck, you got special events, you need catering, they're here to assist you with anything plant-based infusion. Yes, yes. You can catch us on all things Sometimeitarian. That's on Gmail, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of those things. (laughs) Uh, If you need us for catering, same thing. You can get that off the website itself or you can DM us and we'll give you the details. Uh, But we'd love to feed you.